So, I'm so honored to be here, thrilled to be with all of you, and thank you for being here this morning. And uh, Zoe, where did Zoe go? She just went out. I want to apologize for embarrassing her talking about sex. <laughs> you tell her. Well, well, the important thing is, you know, I wish I'd known at her age. Nobody taught me anything. I mean, I didn't know the names, proper names for genitals or body parts or anything. And that ignorance is inexcusable because we need to know about ourselves and this essential part of ourselves that takes body, emotions, mind, and spirit. So what happens is when our young people don't get educated, they think part of us is over here and it's just the body, or maybe there's some feeling that goes with it, no clue about how the mind plays a part and the beliefs we have and the invisible wounds, and certainly spirit. What does that have to do with anything? Say everything. everything. Like you mean it. Everything. Because there's no part of us that operates without spirit. Yes or yes? yes. So there's no answer except yes. When I say yes or yes, you just say yes, right? So that's just the way it is. So I want to talk today with you a little bit about invisible wounds. You all know that's what it's about. Am I supposed to be using the clicker? Do I, I do? Am I, I, I use. Yes, thank you. Okay, how do I do it? I push this. Side arrows. Thank you, Cecilia. Taking you home with me. And Cecilia disappears. All right, here we go. All right, so what are we going to do today? Read it. Stop the sabotage of your love, money, and sex. Now, did you know you were sabotaging those parts of your life? Some of you know that, right? So what we're going to work on is a core principle that if we can see it, say, if I can see it, then I can heal it. Say it like you mean it. If I can see it, then I can heal it. Because who's got the power? Say, I do. I do. I have the power. And that's what we're going to work with. I have the power because in this community, I don't have to apologize. Sometimes I'm places where I'm like, can I talk about spiritual things? I can talk about it here. I can just be totally out. We know we're connected to that love and that light of the universe, yes? yes? So we know we have the power to heal what we need to heal, but first we have to see it. Sheila, can we heal something if we can't see it? Absolutely. Thank you. We have to be able to see it to heal it. All right, let's go. Let's see, I go to the next thing. Oh, yeah, there's my friend, Dr. Oz. So I just wanted to bring him in because I'm deeply honored. And you guys, I invite you to follow me on social media so you can see the Dr. Oz appearances because it's a big deal for me that I have for, oh, God, I hate to tell you how many years, since I was 16, been on television. And, you know, when you're 16, how much do you know? At least in my case, I knew zip about anything. And my high school drama teacher came up to me and handed me a piece of paper and said, go there tomorrow at 3.30. I said, well, what is it? They, he said, they need a television host. So I went, and they picked me and two other kids to host a show called Help on KGO TV in San Francisco. So that was my first show, Help. Shades of things to come, but I didn't know it. You know how you are at 16, at least me, <laughs> walking around totally. Clueless, 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 clueless. So he is exactly who you think he is. He, you know, there's some people, I will not name names, that they are not who you think they are. He is who you think he is. He's a good guy. Okay, so this is quick bio on me, blah, 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 down. Okay, the most important thing up there is the psychology, science, spirituality part. So let me tell you quickly about the science. Psychology, I think, is self-explanatory. But the part about science is I was not a clinician. I am now a clinician, a trainer, all, author, all of that. But I started in hard science because it felt safer. It was safer for me to be in my head than the rest of me. And I could work in the monkey lab doing research with monkeys rather than people because I didn't have to talk to them because I was suffering from a very, very profound depression the early part of my life. I just didn't know it. I was probably the only person who didn't know it. Now, those of you who've ever been depressed, just do this. 
So you know a little bit about what I was going through, except I was on the far, deep, dark end of the spectrum. And walking across the campus, I was at University of Washington Med School at that point, and I thought I was invisible. That's how disassociated I was. Bad. And a friend of mine, finally, I had a little breakdown, and I thought I was having a heart attack and was going to die at like age 21 or something. She took me to the student health center, and the doctor there, this is something I know none of you have ever done, said to me, do you know what's going on with you? And I had figured it out while I was sitting there because I'd studied some psychology. And I said, well, I'm having a massive anxiety attack. She said, yes, yes, you are, Rebecca Wells. I remember her to this day. And uh, she said, why do you think you're having it? I said, oh, well, I'm working my way through school. I'm at the medical school over here doing research and, and I'm doing my doctorate and I'm gonna enter medical school officially next year and I've got multiple programs I'm studying, blah, 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 blah. And I just broke up with this person I've been seeing and I'm, the, she said, no, <laughs> that's not why you're having the anxiety attack. She said, all of that is going on in your life and you're sitting here looking as cool as a cucumber that's called looking good while feeling bad. <laughs> Put your hand up if you've done it. We all do that. We live in a culture where it's just not okay to be authentic, to say, you know what, I am really having a really bad day today, and I'd like to talk about it. Is that okay? Or can I just be real with you that today's not my best day, and I might even need some support? Uh... Yeah, right? <laughs> might need some support, and we don't, give permission to one another, one another, one another, or ourselves to just be real. And it was very hard for me to be real because the looking good while feeling bad thing is something that was perfected. <laughs> I perfected it. Okay, so just, just telling you, all right? So that's over. Now, what was happening for me is I was suffering from ACEs. Adverse Childhood Experiences, and there are 14 of them. And on that list, in fact, they're not, the list isn't up here. This afternoon we'll go through the list of what happens that creates ACEs. But ACEs can be anything from divorce, abuse, children being abandoned, uh, children being um, in some way, uh, looking for the word, looking for the word, where it's going to come, any way hurt or harmed. But the primary things that do that are parents suffering from addiction, parents missing, um, poverty, racism, those are all ACEs that affect a child's, everybody, brain. And when the brain is changed, those ACEs begin to change all these things that you see on that little pyramid. Child with ACEs grows up to be an adult with ACEs. Make sense? because the brain gets the last word. So while I was in the monkey lab studying the brains of prematurely born macaque monkeys to see when they could learn to see and when they could learn to hear, we discovered that some of our monkeys actually weren't doing well because they had not been nurtured by their mothers. Because we had some of the monkeys in our lab from that original primate study where they took the monkey babies from the mother. Whoo! troubled, 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 troubled creatures. Very dangerous, very dangerous, because they didn't get nurturing. Well, what does it make us if we don't get enough nurturing? What does it make us if we get hurt or harmed and we don't get to even frickin' talk about it? What happens to us? So in this community, this is a unique place where I know in unity, we get to talk about it, right? Yeah. Yay! Say yay! yay. Okay. Now, here's the thing about ACEs, latest cutting-edge research, I already outed myself as a big research geek, so you won't be surprised to hear me talk about this, right? So, the DNA changes when we have ACEs. So, I was in Israel last year, actually 18 months ago, University of Tel Aviv, leading trauma research center in the world, studying changes in the brain and the DNA of Holocaust survivors. So, you would expect somebody who'd had their entire family or community murdered to have changes in the brain, wouldn't you? Yes. Also the DNA. Now wait, that's first generation. Do this with me. 
Second generation identical changes. Do it again. Here we go. Third generation identical changes. And they're already looking at the fourth. So what does that tell us? It tells us that if we are harmed in childhood in any way, our brains change, and so does our DNA, and we pass it on. So what does DNA stand for? Descendants and ancestors, right? Descendants and ancestors. Because we get those changes. Now, what helps us to heal? Because we're here to heal, right? I don't want you to leave feeling depressed and hopeless. We're here to heal. You're in the place where transformation happens. We don't need all the, okay, wait, wait, you do want to know about, because the person who discovered telomeres, and the telomere effect, of course, Elizabeth Blackburn, she won the Nobel Prize in medicine for that, and I love her, woman scientist. And she discovered that the telomeres can create patterns in our lives. Now, prior to her research, everyone believed that your DNA made you who you are, your eye color, your height, what you look like, your intelligence. People believed all that. Guess what? Mm -mm. No, <laughs> not so. What we know is that at the ends of the DNA, the telomeres are picking up what's going on around us and how we feel about it. We feel stressed. It sends an electrochemical signal, not just to the brain, to the DNA. So one of the leading Nobel Prize scientists in the world, Monsieur France, had this great comment. He said, the telomeres are listening to us, and they tell the DNA what to do. Now, this is important. Think about it. Because if it's listening to us, we can change the signal we're sending, yes or yes. yes. This is where we can turn the tide. And I'll tell you in a minute about the really cool research that relates directly to unity and what we do here. Now, did I tell you that I came out of my depression because I found unity? No. Yeah, you need to know that. So I had this friend, Della Heidi, and I called Della some point in my depression after I had a whole big long story, but I won't get into all of it. Um, okay, quickly. I got a scholarship to go work with Dr. Virginia Satir, and after working with Satir, who changed my life forever, and I will always be grateful, um, those of you who don't know, she created humanistic psychology, created family therapy. She was awarded and honors all over the world for changing the course of human history. Because instead of treating people like they were objects, how about human beings? So she would... <laughs> May I use you for a second as a demo? Come stand right here for a second. Okay. She would come up to people and go, like to me, who didn't want to have feelings and was really shut down. And the first night, oh God, I have to tell you guys, she had this shirt on that said, I like you all over it. <laughs> she was hugging people. And I was like, <sighs> hugging, oh God, help me. And then she came up to me, may I touch you? Of course. No, I, I want to touch, touch you, okay? Touch, touch. So she would come up to me and she'd go, what are you feeling, Brenda? <laughs> right here, what are you feeling? And I was just, ah, feelings. Thank you very much. What's your name? <laughs> Thank you, Barbie. So that was the beginning of starting to have feelings and making it okay. So from there, after Virginia had slapped me around for a whole month in a residential training, <laughs> can you imagine having her for a month? Everything. It was like being on the fast track of transformation. I learned to meditate there. Ruthie Alon was there from the Feldenkrais work in Israel, all these great people. And I was the baby. I was the youngest person there. And thankfully, they'll slap me into being awake. Okay, so I lost my train of thought because all that came rushing back. What was I talking about before? How I came to unity. Okay, so that got me out of depression for a while. I went back to my research in the monkey lab, got depressed again, very badly. Della Heidi was someone I'd met through Satir, and I called her, and she said, well, you really should go to the Unity Church. And I was like, church? <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in the church. The last place I wanted to go was church, because it was one of those kind of churches, you know, back in the day, thou shalt not, shalt not, shalt not, sin, 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 hell and damnation. <laughs> Sorry. 
You know what I'm talking about, guys, okay? <laughs> so I wasn't going back, but I was really having a hard time. The only thing that kept me going was I was a jogger. I was out jogging every day, and I was jogging, but really depressed. And I look up, it says Unity Church. <laughs> 19th and Ocean, San Francisco. I'm jogging along. I'm all sweaty, and... but that's it. God has sent me a signal. How could I be jogging down the street and look up and see Unity Church? So I jogged in, <laughs> sat down. They were having the noon meditation. And I just sat there hoping I wouldn't leave too many marks on the chair because I was... <laughs> sat for the meditation, didn't really quite get what was going on. And then the woman leading the meditation, her name was Elizabeth, looked right at me. She said, dear, when you came in, so much negative energy came in with you. <laughs> She said, you just brought anger and resentment in. <laughs> Reading me like a book, right? And that was a little freaky, but I knew I needed it because I was desperate. And that was it. She read through my little being and all my energy and told me I needed to go bless the person I was so angry and resentful with, which I did, and everything changed. It was my boss who hated me. I didn't know why. But she said, you bless the air he breathes, the clothes he wears, everything he touches, everything he thinks. You just say, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. So I was going, God bless you, 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 God bless you. Within two weeks, I'm not kidding, I was happy. The energy had lifted. Of course, I was going back to the church now for classes and for service on Sunday morning. All of that changed, and here's the really crazy part. Six weeks into the blessing campaign, and I'm feeling like a new being, and my colleagues are going, are you okay? <laughs> well, I'm not kidding. One of them actually asked me if I was on drugs, because I was so happy and lit up. I said, well, no, but I go to this Unity Church thing. You should come with me. <laughs> I got a call out of the blue from the San Francisco Health Department inviting me to come and run a new program. My dream job at the time. Six weeks after I started working with this energy. Now you tell me. You tell me, is this some powerful stuff in this unity business here? Changed my life and unity has always been my home base. I'm all about silent unity. Every month I'm on the prayer call and Everything about unity I love, so I'm grateful to be here. So when I get invited to speak at a unity church, it's like, yay, I get to go home! <laughs> I am very excited. All right, so where are we? Let me go back to, oh yeah, yeah, oh wait, love, money, and sex. Yes, yes, let's talk about love, money, and sex patterns. Is that okay? All right, now we go to the next slide. Where do they come from? That's a genogram. As far back in our families as we can go, there isn't a person in this room who does not have trauma. Trauma. On that list of aces, those are traumas. Immigration is a trauma. Most people in here came from somewhere else. Most of us have been through our ancestors going through wars. My dad was in the war. He was a soldier. He was actually a chauffeur driving the color guard around, and that wasn't fun because you know what the color guard was doing in a war, right? Doing the services and burials. So he was very traumatized, only I didn't know that as a kid. My parents came from the deep south, they're African Americans, can you spell trauma? I didn't know that as a kid. So their acting out their trauma got passed to me. Now every one of us can go back to great grandparents, great grandparents, somewhere in there we're going to find trauma. Parents who lived through the Great Depression, grandparents and great grandparents who had fear and anxiety about money or there were losses. Those traumas, if they aren't resolved, get passed to me. Everybody say me. me. To me. And I'm the one, say it, I'm the one who's the chain breaker in my family. And how do I know that about you? Because you're here. <laughs> you brought yourself to unity. And if you got yourself here, you're the chain breaker. DNA is a chain, right? It's a chain. Yes, it's a chain. Get as excited as you want, sweetheart. It's a chain. <laughs> and we're breaking the chain because we can change our telomeres. You with me? Yes. You with me? All right, so until we break those, 
we're at the mercy of, say it, toxic patterns. Now, what are toxic? I know none of you have ever seen toxic patterns. None of us have ever had toxic patterns, have we? Smile. Say no. <laughs> Not me. Okay, so what kind of toxic patterns have we got? There's the big baby toxic pattern. Now, what does big baby say? I me mean mine. I me mean mine. You've seen little, little babies do that, but you've seen big babies do it too, haven't you? Now, the big baby says, usually, what's behind I me mean mine is I feel like a victim. So I have to grab everything, and everything has to be about me because I feel so bad about myself. I don't want you to know it, so it has to be I, me, mine. Make sense? All right. So from big baby, we also have bullying and blaming. Now, how does bullying and blaming work? May I borrow you for a minute, my dear? Okay, now I'm going to be mean to you, but it's not personal, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> Tyler, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm going to point at you and say, you did not give me what I wanted. Now try to get close to me. That's as close as you'll ever get. Now what if you decide to blame me back and say, you did it, Brenda. Now watch me, watch me. We double the distance. So when I'm working in my training programs with couples who don't have sex and can't get close, I know there's bullying and blaming. Now what's behind the bullying and blaming? Do this. What's behind it? Me. I'm feeling bad about me and I'm going to take it out on you. See, I didn't have to cue him. Thank you, Tyler. I didn't mean any of it. I didn't mean any of it. So bullying and blaming creates distance. Creates what? Distance. What does I mean mine create? Distance. distance. All toxic patterns create distance. Now, what does that have to do with money? Everything. Everything, you bet. And then there's jealousy and envy. Now, no one here has ever felt jealous or envious. I know that, right? Not here. None of us, right? Just shake your head and go, hmm. Now, what is jealousy and envy? What is it? Feeling as if I lack. Say, feeling as if I lack, as if I'm not good enough. And is that the biggest lie on the planet? Yes. yes. This is why we, I talked a little bit about how the brain gets programmed. Once your brain is programmed, how many of you drive a car? Have you ever been in your car and you looked up and you'd gone 10 or 20 miles and gone, wow, I've gone 10 or 20, who was driving your car? <laughs> your automatic brain that has a pattern for driving that's deeply grooved in the brain. It creates an actual neurological groove in the brain. Your brain was driving your car and you were somewhere else. Do you have to think about brushing your teeth? I dare you, now here's an exercise. Go home and for the next week, brush your teeth with the other hand and watch what happens. <laughs> brush your teeth with the other hand. Now I've, I've done this many times <laughs> to practice getting my brain to, and I'll start with my left hand because I'm right hand dominant. And the right hand will try to take the brush out of the left hand. That's how strong the pattern is. You don't have to think about tying your shoes, putting on your clothes, anything we do repetitively. The brain goes, okay, looks like you're going to be doing that over and over. Let me create a groove. And the more we do it, the deeper the groove gets. The more we speak this language, English, we've got a groove for English. Try to learn a new language. When you're young, the brain goes, grooves, more grooves, good get past about 35, the brain goes, really? <laughs> you want new grooves? I've got so many grooves up here, I'm tired of grooving. <laughs> However, it's good for the brain. We have to make it keep learning and growing. You know it, you guys, it's use it or lose it. So we get into jealousy and envy because somewhere we got a groove that said, Somebody gave you the look or the words, or they treated you like you weren't good enough. And the child brain goes, because children, oh my God. My mother suffered from depression. Not the kind where you go, oh, I feel so depressed. What's called an agitated depression. <laughs> That's how agitated depression looks. My mom was the most beautiful, elegant, 
intelligent, well-educated person you could imagine. And people would say, Brenda, your mother's so beautiful, so elegant. I'd say, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I would think you should live with that bitch. <laughs> and, and I love my mom, because, you know, we love our parents no matter how, and I didn't know it was depression. Children don't go, perhaps my mother's suffering from an agitated depression. <laughs> and it's secondary to intergenerational patterns of trauma. <laughs> and that's why my mother's yelling at me and calling me names and hitting me. It's okay, Mom. It's suffering from ACEs. <laughs> what does a child say? What's wrong with me? We internalize because our brains can't do abstract thinking. We don't get the full brain. You guys, we don't get a complete brain till 25 or 26. So everything that goes in prior to the age of nine, show me nine fingers, nine, I want you to remember this, Everything prior to the age of nine goes into the lower brain. I'm teaching a class right now, my mastermind class, called How to Get on the High Road, Get from the Low Brain Up to the Cortex, and how to stay up there, because this will fire. That child brain will fire. we got to get new grooves up here, and it takes a long time. How many have learned a new language recently? How much time does it take? How much repetition does it take? Okay, repetition is what programs our brain. So jealousy and envy is just, I got some child grooves that said I wasn't good enough, and I look at you, and you look so much better than me, because everybody is. I think you have so much more to me than me, because everybody does, because that's what my child brain made up. Do you understand? Yes. You got you sure? Yes. yes. You really got it? Yes. Okay. So then, once the brain gets a pattern, what's it called? Now, a lot of people, the shows I just did recently for the Dr. Oz show, uh, the one, let's see, when was it? Uh, early March, was on a woman who was a binge eater. And if you want, you can go to his website, put my name in, you'll see the different shows. But the binge eater couldn't stop herself. She didn't want to binge eat, but she couldn't stop it. Why? The repetition compulsion came from the grooves in the brain of her not believing she was worthy. And when you don't think you're worthy, you have anxiety. And if you have anxiety and depression, you need something to make you feel better. It could be food. It could be alcohol. It could be compulsive sex. It could be gambling. It could be all sorts of things that temporarily, zing, hit the brain with some nice endorphins or serotonin or sugar or caffeine. Chocolate tastes so good. And then that can become a compulsion, right? So we want to get off the wheel, right? Who wants off the wheel? Yes. Who wants out of the negative love syndrome? You know what the negative love syndrome is, is when you get the groove that your love life has to be like that too. How many people, and I, you don't have to raise your hand because I don't want you to actually admit to this. <laughs> How many people have ever had someone say, you look great or I love you, and inside the voice goes, not really, not really. Not me, not really. There's some internal knee-jerk negative response that says, I'm not good enough. Now, that's called negative love syndrome because where does it come out? Where does it come out? Most of us don't take it out on the people we hardly know. It comes out on the people closest to us. Yes or yes? Yes. We all know this. These are truths that are just obvious. We're just going to admit to it today so we can change it. Is that good? Yes. All right, so we want to get out of negative love syndrome because when we're in it, we abuse our power. I think these are self-explanatory. And how we do anything, read it with me. How we do anything is how we do everything. Now, what is real power? We're in unity. Now, this afternoon, those of you who are coming to the afternoon workshop from 2 to 4... You arranged to be here this morning. You can arrange your afternoon. <laughs> because I want you to have two hours of breaking the patterns. All right, what is real love? Tap your heart. It's forgiveness. Forgiveness is one of the 12 powers of the heart. It's what? <laughs> and it's one of the powers that sets us free. The Course in Miracles says forgiveness is the key to happiness. 
It's the key to happiness. If you can let go of resentments, like I was walking around being a little toxic waste dump of resentment, it's the key. Our beautiful musicians are all dressed in the color of forgiveness today. That prayer shawl is the color of forgiveness. It's violet, any shade of violet. That's forgiveness. So just take a moment, tap your heart, and breathe in. And I want you to think of something you're holding against yourself, just for a moment, that you're holding against yourself, some woulda, coulda, shoulda, or you're woulda, cutting or shoulding on yourself. And you know what it sounds like. And just tap there and just say, I'm willing, I'm willing. to exercise the power of forgiveness. And let myself off the hook. Let myself off the hook. Because if I screwed up anywhere, it makes me human. And I'm just a human being like every other human being. Is that true or true? Good. So we want to exercise that. Now you see the violet, you tap your heart, you bring up whatever it is. This is a tool you can use anytime, anywhere. People might think you're just fanning yourself because the room is warm. (laughs) And actually, you're forgiving yourself or forgiving someone else, all right? And that's how you take back your power. I think that's Wonder Woman up there. And that's how you increase your self-love. Anybody here good with more self-love? All right, now, what's the fastest way to get more self-love? Turn to the person next to you and say, I love you. And then person behind you and say, I've got some love for you. And now everyone in doing that, I want you to remember this core truth, which is we are one. What are we? We're one. So just say, hey, we're one. We're one. We're one. We're on the same journey. We're on the same journey. And that is unleashing heart power into the world. Is that good? Are you sure? And we're going to skip through that and go to this. Will you say this with me? Everybody read it with me. Each one of us has a unique part to play in the healing of the world. And that's why we want to unleash heart power. Yes or yes? That's why we want this unity vibration to keep moving out into the world. Because in here, tuning up the way you are and the way you will this afternoon from two to four, You're going to unleash more power. So thank you so, so much. It's my honor to be here. Love you guys. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.